and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Charmaine and today I have a massive book haul for y'all. I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so uh, in June, in May, I did pretty good. In June, I went a little off the rails, but Book Outlet had a sale where they were on sale for $7.99. They practically paid me to buy them. And then every time you bought books, they sent you a $10 off coupon for July to August. So they literally paid me to buy them. <laughs> and then I have some gifted books here as well, because I did host a raffle and then I won from a raffle and that kind of thing. So I have 13 books that I bought myself and then the rest are books that I was gifted. So there's two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven books that I was gifted. That's almost half and half. I feel as though that that's like a pretty good balance. Pretty good balance. Yeah, so I'm going to show you guys what I got here. So the first book I picked up for myself is the The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. This is, it's a novel of the elf fame? Elf fame? This is the third one in the series of The Cruel Prince. So they're on the back here. I don't know if Stolen Air is part of this, but I do have the, I have the Cruel Prince, the Wicked King, and the Dark Forest here. So they're on the back. So I am excited to read this. I was holding off actually reading the series until I had the third one, because as you guys know, like I tell you all the time, my memory is bad and I don't want to be like, hey, like I'm going to start this series and then not have the third one. So I did pick that one up. Then I bought myself this series. This is Pride and Premeditation by... I think it's Terraza Price. It's this one. I'm probably saying the name wrong. I apologize. So the first one is Pride and Premeditation. Then it's Sense and Second Degree Murder. And then it's Manslaughter Park. So they're a play on the Jane Austen novels. I think what it is, is it's kind of like the Jane Austen novel with murder written into it. I think is what it is. I really like the covers and I love Jane Austen. So both of those reasons made it that I need to buy those. A hundred percent. Then I picked up Isle of the Gods by Amy Kaufman. I honestly don't know what a whole lot of these books are about, just so you guys know. This is a library binding book. I have never picked one of these up before. Like I didn't know because it said library binding and I was like, that sounds neat. I'll get that. So yeah, it's a library binding book where it's like hardcover, but it doesn't have like the dust jacket around it. So I think that's pretty cool. Also, Amy Kaufman is one of my favorite authors right now, as you guys know. I actually have another series in here by her. This is the Beyond the End of the World and The Other Side of the Sky. This is Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner together, because Amy Kaufman quite often writes with other people. So The Other Side of the Sky is number one, and then Beyond the End of the World is number two. It says, for these ones, it says... Prince Norse's home is in the sky, a gleaming city held aloft by intricate engines powered by technology. But North believes his sky island is sinking. Its engines are failing, and the key to saving his home is to venture to the place where the engines were first created. Nim is a living goddess of her people on the surface, responsible for providing answers, direction, hope. But in the midst of the surface, most crisis, worst crisis yet... A mist that spreads madness and poison. Doubts have arisen among the people in Nim's divinity. She must find a way to manifest her power before she is overthrown and all is lost. North and Nim's lives are intertwined, through their hearts, though their hearts can never be. Linked by a terrifying prophecy and caught between duty and fate, they must choose either to save their people or succumb to the bond that is forbidden to them. So it sounds kind of like... Um, sci-fi romance which I like I'm I'm getting more into not the romantic part but I like the sci-fi part and honestly I have figured out by reading the zodiac books that I do kind of like romance as long as there's like fantasy with it or sci-fi with it or mystery with it that kind of thing I'm okay like with the romance being in there with that so opening up a little bit new horizons in the books that I'm reading so that's pretty cool then I have The Night in Question, an Agatha's mystery. This is the second one. I actually have the Agatha's here. I was also waiting to read this series. So this, as far as I know, for the Agatha's, it's kind of like, well, it says right here, part Agatha Christie and part Veronica Mars and completely entertaining. I think it's like a group of schoolgirls and they like start solving mysteries, I think is what it is. And they call themselves the Agatha's. 
because I think there's like Agatha A and Agatha B. Like, I'm not sure. So anyways, I think that that's what this is about, but this is the second one to it. So now I have the complete series. Then I picked up Curses by Lish McBride. This one is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. You can tell from the picture. So it's a picture of beauty on the front and then it has like the slash marks and you can see the beast underneath. I think maybe in this one, she's the beast. I think is what it is. Let's, let's read. Uh, run away with a fairy godling at her betrothed ball left Merit Caravan with more than a fairy born noble could want. Wealth, intelligence, and the kind of beastly vestige that would makes, that makes children weep. There we go. Now Merit has until her 18th birthday to break the fairy's curse, and every day she loses a little bit more of herself to the animal that she's become, all because she picked one unsuitable boy. Trevin McDumont has nothing except a fairy gift of charm, an exceptionally handsome face and two siblings he's trying desperately to protect. As the oldest son in a family of Connors, he's learned how to use what he has to his best advantage. He'll do anything to keep his siblings safe, so when his mother runs afoul of a beast of a caravan. Te Tevin doesn't think twice. He'll pay his mother's debt, even if it means taking her place. So yeah, it's a reverse um, Beauty and the Beast retelling where she's the beast instead and he's the like captor, I guess. So I'm excited to read it and I love the cover. That's, and I mean, you guys know I love retellings. Like, so win, 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 win everywhere. Then we have A Guide to the Dark by Miriam Medu, I think. It says, some places never leave us, others don't let you go. I love the cover on this one. It's for some reason, it kind of reminds me of Indiana Jones. I don't know why. I don't know what it is about it, but I think nothing, maybe. But in my mind, I was like, ooh, that's Indiana Jones-ish. So yeah, I picked up that one. I think it'll be fun. This one says, something is building, simmering just out of reach. The room is watching, but... Myra and Lila don't know that yet. When they are stranded in their college tour, spring break, best friends road trip, they find themselves at the Wildwood Motel located in the middle of nowhere, Indiana. Myra can't shake the feeling that there's something wrong and rotten about the room. Inside, she is haunted by nightmares of her dead brother. When she wakes up, he's still there. Lila doesn't see him or notice anything suspicious about Room 9, the place that does seem a little run down, but it's a certain charm she can't wait to capture on camera. If Layla is being honest, she is too preoccupied with her confused feelings for Mira to see much else. But when they learn about the eight people that died in the same room, they realize there must be a connection between the death and the unexplainable things that have been back. Blah, blah. That keep happening inside of it. So I guess it has nothing to do with Indiana Jones, and that's just in my mind. But it sounds really good, and I'm excited to read it. <laughs> like, that doesn't take much. Then I have the ba Black Queen by, I think it's Jumata Amel. It says, everyone loved her, homecoming killed her. This is it here. This is the back. So you can see like the bottom of her face. So that's pretty neat. This one says, Nova Albright, the first black homecoming queen in Love It High is dead. Murdered the night of her coronation. Her body is found the next morning in the old slave cemetery where she spent her weekends revitalizing. Tinsley MacArthur was supposed to be queen. She's not only beautiful and wealthy and white, it's her legacy. Her grandmother, her mother, and even her sister wore the crown before her. Everyone in love it knows that Tinsley would do anything to carry on the MacArthur tradition. No one is more certain than that than Duchess Simmons, Nova's best friend. Duchess's father is the first black police captain in Love It. For Duchess Nova's crown was not only a personal win, but a win for all black kids. And now her best friend is dead and her father won't admit that he, the main suspect is right in front of his face. Duchess is convinced that Tinsley killed Nova and that Tinsley is privileged enough to think that she can get away with it. But when it seems that Duchess's father is the undoing that he always does, falling behind the blue line, which means the white girl could go free. Duchess is determined to prove Tinsley's guilt, only to do that she'll have to get close to her. And Tinsley has an, event, an agenda too. Everyone loved Nova and sometimes... Love is exactly what gets you killed. So I thought that this sounded really good. I'm also trying to read more books by black authors or authors of color at all. So I'm trying to add in more diversity into my TBRs. So I thought that that would be a good one. And then I got this series here. And this is A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy Eileen and A Venom Dark and Sweet by Judy Eileen. 
look at how pretty these covers are. They're all pastel -y and there's people on the front with their hair up and they have like swirls coming around them. There's the fish on this one. So I thought that those would be good. I think that they're uh, Asian fantasies, I think. So I'm excited for that. So those are the ones that I bought myself. Now these are the ones that I was gifted. I got gifted The Heart of the Valkyrie by Mel Melanie Karzak. This one I actually had, this was like my first really big author arc. Like Melanie Karzak is a pretty famous author and I signed up for her arc and I did like a super good review. Like my friends on Instagram helped me with my review. So I did like probably the best review of my entire life. I made them read it like three times to make sure that I was doing it right. But I thought it was really cool that I got the arc and then I was like, you know, that was such a good book that I wanted in physical copy. So I added it to my list and then I won this in a raffle. So I got this from Nurse Book Galore. So thank you very much, Nurse. Then I got this one, uh, this one and this one. Oh, and this one. So these ones actually go with the series that I have already. And that is Close to Home by Cara Hunter. I think Cara Hunter is my favorite author of this year. That might be because I got to talk to her in real life and like chat with her and everything like that. But she talked about this series that she wrote. So I have All the Rage and then I have No Way Out. I think No Way Out is number two. And then In the Dark. So I got like three extra books to this series. So I have four of them now. So I'm excited to read it. She talked about it. She was really happy with it. This one is from Rayleigh Reads. Then I got No Way Out from Cozy Nook Book who is Crystal. And then I got In the Dark. I think In the Dark is number two, maybe. This is from Abby, who's Fibered Folios. So yeah, I'm excited to get those. So thank you very much to everybody. Then I got The Good, The Bad, and The Aunties by Jesse Suntano. So this is number three in the dial A for aunties and four aunties in a wedding. So I'm excited to read that. I got this one from Cece. I think that'll be good. I got... Dial A for Aunties was one of the ones that I suggested for book club, like recently. And a lot of people want to read it. It's like kind of like a mystery comedy, kind of. So I think that's neat. Then I got the list. It says five names and the first two are dead. The third one is yours. This is by Karis Jones. It looks like this. It looks kind of creepy. So it says Beth Belmont runs every day. She knows every turn on her local trail, every bump on the road. So when she spots a strange slip of white paper at the base of a tree, she's drawn to it. On the paper are five names and the third is her own. Unease nags at Beth. Why is she on there? And what lies, what ties her to the other four strangers? And when Beth discovers that the first two are dead, there's only one question to ask. Is she next? So it's like a mystery thriller kind of thing. I think it's more of like a young adult one. And this one I got from Susan, who's Sunik17. So thank you very much, Susan. Then I got this one. This one actually I got gifted for helping another person run a raffle. So I got this from Alicia. She runs my, she runs um, Not Your Average Book Club Instagram. It's like my online book club. So this is When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker. Look at how big this is. <laughs> like, it's like 700 pages, I think. Like, yeah. It goes up to 690. So it's 690 pages. Let's just run that up to 700, be real. <laughs> so yeah, this is the book that she picked for me. I had this in my wish list because I heard everybody saying really good stuff about this. It says, as an assassin for the rebellion group Fear de Eight, I think, Rave's job is to complete orders and never get caught. When a rival bounty hunter turn turns her world upside down, blood spills, heartbreak, and Rave finds herself in prison in the Guild of Nobles, a powerful group of fae her turn to, who turn her into a political statement. There we go. Crushed by the loss of his great love, Ken Bigger took the head of a king and donned his met melted crown. Now on a tireless quest to quell the ever ebbing ache in his chest, a cure, a clue lured, lose him to the a clue lures him, there we go, into the capital's highest prison security where he stumbles upon the imprisoned rave. Echoes of the past race between them. There's more to the story than meets the eye, but some are too poisonous to swallow. 
I have heard nothing but good stuff about this. Everybody is saying this is like their top favorite book of the year. They're like the, apparently it, this book is like so it's like the new fourth wing is kind of what I'm hearing about it. You know what I mean? Like because fourth wing was really hyped up. This is kind of like the same thing. Not that fourth wing wasn't good. It was insanely good. But like this is the new one that everybody's talking about that is like echoey of the presence that fourth wing had. So I'm really excited to get this. I think that's very cool. And thank you, Alicia. And then we have The Queen of Poisons by Robert Thorgood. This is the um, the Marlowe Murder Club book, number three. So now I have all three of them. So I'm super excited about that. It's like an older group of people get together and then they solve murders in the UK, I think. Oh, and I forgot to tell you who it was from. It is from Chelsea, who is a fairy tale couple. And then we have Heart Still Beating by Brooke Archer. It said the world ended, love did not. It looks like this. It's gorgeous. It's like cracked words and like flowers coming through it. I just think it's pretty. It says we all had to find our own coping methods when the world ended. Some of us hardened, some of us cracked, some of us shattered. So I don't know. I don't know literally anything about it. I saw the cover and was like, ooh that's for me. <laughs> As you guys know, that's how I like to do a lot of the book hauls that we do here. <laughs> and then the last one I got, I actually got gifted this from Once Upon a Book Club because I bought two of their like past book subscriptions. So I got that one and then I got this one, which did I show you guys the book for that? Yeah, I don't know. I did in another video. But this is The Disappearing Act by Anna, uh, Catherine Stedman. So it's this. And I think maybe it's a thriller. It says, a British actress discovers the dark side of Hollywood when she is the only witness to a sudden disappearance of a woman she meets at an audition in this electrifying psychological thriller from New York Times, best-selling author the some of somebody, no, something in the water and Mr. Nobody. So it is like a thriller. So that's really cool. And I got that for like a gift from buying for them. So yay for me. Uh, the other box that I got was he spells treason or something like that. I'm not even sure. I haven't opened it yet. I got my boyfriend to put it aside so I could have it as like a treat for myself later. And then I got the night birds for this one. I just don't know where I set those books. But yeah, so I ended up getting that as well. So really I got 25 books, 26 books technically because I didn't open that one yet. But I did get 26 books in the month of June. Some of these I bought earlier, like the, um, I bought, I think the first round of my um, book outlet haul, I think, was right at the beginning of June. I'm not even sure because Taylor and I talked about it at the same time. Taylor also ended up getting this deal and she ended I think she got like 20 books, I think, that she said something like that. So it was a pretty good deal. The deal is still on, but it might not be on when you guys are seeing. No, it's not. It's not. The deal is not on anymore. Cancel that. Cancel that. Sorry, you guys. But yeah. Oh, wait, I forgot to show you this one. This is the last one I got. This is Raiders of the Lost Heart by Joe Segura, I think. Your tent or mine, it says. It's a romance. And this one is like Indiana Jones. <laughs> so it says, rival archaeologists must team up on a secret Aztec expedition or it could leave their careers and their hearts in ruins. So I did ask for this. I got gifted this one. It's uh, archaeologist kind of thing. I thought it would be fun. And I know it's a romance, but I really like the cover and I like archaeologist stuff. Archaeologist stuff. So this one is from Nicole, who is Nicole's Dreams of Books. So thank you very much, Nicole. I am excited to read it. I, I actually am like genuinely excited to read this, even though it's a romance and those aren't my favorite. But I think I'm going to recommend it for book club because I think it would be a fun one to read for book club. Like a comedy, mystery actually maybe archaeologist maybe there's like a heist Ooh, a heist i don't know i don't know let me know if you've read any of these books what do you think of any of these books do you think i'm a little crazy you guys can tell me that too it's cool it's cool i know your girl likes to get a lot of books it's not my fault i mean like it is but <laughs> i'm still gonna say it's not my fault <laughs> okay Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already and check out my description box for other content creators. I also have local Canadian Etsys down there if you guys want to check those out as well. And thank you guys so much for spending a couple of minutes of your day with me today. I really, really appreciate that and I really, really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! The clicker, you know?
I don't know. I try. I try. Bye.